Well, chapter 18 deals with aldehydes and ketones. In fact, we're going to cover aldehydes and ketones in this chapter, and we'll see them again in chapter 22. So, as far as aldehydes and ketones are concerned, we, we've seen these before. We've encountered them numerous times. Remember that the structure of an aldehyde is a carbonyl right, adjacent to an R group and a hydrogen atom. So don't forget that group here. We identify it as a carbonyl group. Um, and then a ketone is just the same carbonyl except with an R group on both sides of that carbonyl. Uh, we often abbreviate aldehydes as a CHO group and a ketone as an RCOR um, group, essentially, here. Now, when we look at the structure of the aldehyde or the, the ketone, uh, the carbonyl group in particular, we see that the carbon is sp2 hybridized. And don't forget that means that it's trigonal planar. So if we rotate it over on its side, Right, we get our R group coming out at us and one going back into the plane of the page. Um, often we draw it like this to illustrate and show the pi bond. So remember with sp2 hybridization, we have p orbitals um, on our oxygen and our carbon. And that's the overlap of those p orbitals that give us that pi bond, right? So that bond right here is our pi bond. So we're going to talk about the reactivity of that carbonyl group a lot in this chapter. It's dealing with the reactivity of aldehydes and ketones. Well, one of the ways that we can explain some of the reactivity is by looking at the resonance structure of, um, a, of a carbonyl group. So in this example, we're going to look at a ketone. So one of the resonance structures takes these electrons and puts them on top of that oxygen and that would generate a formal plus charge and a negative charge on the oxygen. So you get that positive charge down here below. So with that positive charge uh, being down here, it means that things with negative charges tend to get attracted to it. So um, nucleophiles will attack here. So alkoxides, hydroxide, hydride, um, Grignards, all sorts of other things that we'll see in this chapter. Whereas things that have positive charges tend to be attracted um, to the top of this molecule, to the oxygen up here. So hydrogens, aluminum trichloride, and other um, compounds that have um, an affinity towards negative charges. Now the other thing that we have to talk about here as we go through kind of some introductory material is we need to review the idea of oxidation and reduction of um, carbon compounds. So in this table we can see that we have um, different compounds from alkanes to alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, carbon dioxide. As you go from the left to the right you are gaining bonds to oxygen atoms. And so if we look down here below, as we move this direction here, right, we're gaining bonds to heteroatoms. For us, this just means, in the context of this chapter, it means oxygen. Right, so heteroatoms could be oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, so on and so forth down here below. Okay, um, and as we go from the right to the left, we're also decreasing bonds to H, right? So if this is your alkane and you have four H's here, you've lost a bond with an H and gained a bond to an oxygen. So often in organic chemistry, we think of oxidation um, and reduction in terms of gaining and losing bonds to oxygen. And this is certainly true too in biochemistry. So we don't sit down and calculate oxidation numbers like we did um, back in general chemistry. All right, so um, again, the number of bonds here going from zero to one. So here you have one bond. I have two bonds to oxygens here, up here. That last molecule gives us carbon dioxide. Now, um, as we go from the right, the most oxidized to the most reduced, to the left here, so moving the other direction, we're going this direction now, 
we increase the number of bonds to H and we have a loss of bonds to oxygen. So that's, that's the turn. It's just the opposite of oxidation, essentially. So keep that in mind because as we go through this chapter, we're going to use um, these, these descriptions to describe kind of what's happening in some of the reactions that take place.